Ladies and gentlemen, this is Vikas and this is Warmer 40K Space Marine True Ultra Heresy Edition. Watch on Bricky. It's been a while since I did a Warmer video and of course it's a Bricky one. Yeah, Bricky's Warmer videos are really awesome. Uh, he barely does that. All of his videos are insanely famous on his channel uh, definitely, but overall like 4-5 million views type of way, which is like good for any channel, right? So, yeah, this is going to be about Space Marine 2. I know it's out, right? Uh, I've seen uh, notification, was it on Steam or Epic, I don't remember, but yeah, Space Marine 2 is out, like, okay. Uh, and yeah, it's well received as far as I can remember. Uh, yeah, Space Marine 2 trailer was awesome as well. I have to check that game out. So, I'm, I'm, obviously, we're going to check that out here. But Brick is going to talk about all the pros and cons of it. So, let's go this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. I love Warhammer, as you, most of you already know. But if you haven't seen other Warhammer reactions I did, check out the link in the description or playlist I created for it. Uh, also, link in the description on my end card. And yeah, let's do it. 24 hours, that's how much time you have left to get entire international worldwide free shipping when you use code BRICKY at your Gamersubs checkout. You will also save 10% off. It's a double whammy. Free shipping, not just to the States, also international, also 10% off. Go ahead and pick up all the flavors and cups and merch that you need to down in the description at Gamersubs.com slash Bricky. There's only 24 hours left, so grab it while you can. Grab your sweet six-pack flavor, my personal flavor. It's amazing. Or check out all of the other awesome options on store for you. Don't forget, and might I say never forget, to always use code Bricky for 10% off your order at gamersubs.com slash Bricky. Some more water, one thing. Space Marine 2 is one of the most anticipated games of the year for a large number of people around me. Not only is this because I make Warhammer content and collect little model toys that make the pew pew noises and roll ones when I need sixes, but also because it is- Oh yeah, he has a podcast, right? I forgot that. Every adapter is ridiculous, right? Where he posts like two to hour long documentaries level thing where they talk about, that's something the most high profile sequels of the last few years I've seen. Space Marine 1 is a third person action game from 2011. The humorous part of Space Marine is that it's genuinely a rather unremarkable title to the majority of people. It's a years relatively after. generic third person shooter slash melee hybrid game that took a little over five hours to beat and had all of the hallmarks of a military shooter of that era. Mediocre overall narrative, relative grayer tan atmosphere, mostly forgettable characters, and an over-reliance on quick time events. It was a 6 out of 10 at best, a perfectly serviceable game with some above average moments, but overall nothing extremely exciting outside of the satisfaction of beating orcs to a pulp and the hilarity of the side villain. Yeah, uh, games are changing a lot, mechanics of it, engines of it. And you can feel that, and games like this would benefit a lot, which I guess is gonna happen with Space Marine 2, because Dark Tide was awesome. I remember playing it, right? It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, so it was an awesome game with the dialogues and everything. You can add smaller things, which is basically what Bethesda was known for back then, right, with the Elder Scrolls and Fallout. They added smaller things here and there that make, made the world feel alive. Even if you're just chopping uh, uh, wood or something, near a river or some shit, you are having entertainment because of these smaller things which you don't, don't really understand but feel it. Nowadays that's much easier in mechanics and engine which people can utilize which is like people are doing especially with Warhammer and games like this which is not really like open world RPG type of game but it's like single shooter but you can still implement elements like that to make the world feel alive. Right? So with what they did with Dark Tide, I, I guess they're gonna do the same thing with Space Marine 2. And a decently in-depth PvP mode. But that's to a lay person. To a Warhammer fan, it's one of the few times their beloved franchise has graced mainstream eyes. One of the only times the Warhammer 40,000 setting had been adapted into something for the modern day. The modern gamer, not 
another strategy game this time. A real get with the times level of product. Characters like Titus and Leandro. Don't know posthumous, what was the Prime or was it Netflix? I think it was Prime, right? Yeah, it was Prime. Who talked about video gamers, we got you or some shit like that, very, where they talked about many other projects they're working on from video game world. And they just, you know, creeped in like Warhammer inside and that kind of pissed me off. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I love games, don't get me wrong. You know, game shows great. You need to treat Warhammer better than that. Warhammer isn't some video game world. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's like saying Tolkien's is like a video game world because somebody made a video game out of that, right? I get it, it's a board game, but it's like, it's much bigger than that now. It's not a video game world only, right? And it's like, you can't just steep in like, oh, this is also something we're doing. You need to invest in that, right? So what is that? Henry Cavill project is also in Prime or is it in Netflix? I think it's in Prime. So you need to invest more into that, like treat it as a big thing rather than just something you just throw in with other video games. We're not subpar soldier men saying soldier men things. They're important now. Turning into various memes in the fandom and creating what I consider one of the largest examples of rose tinted power armor in quite some time. 13 years later, and Warhammer as a product has grown substantially. Already on the up and up for a bit, the COVID 19 pandemic locked everyone indoors and forced them to put down the work clothes and pick up the paintbrush. Along with releases of newer, better editions of the tabletop game, higher quality miniatures, and some new mainline games, Warhammer. 40k was truly on the rise to being a mainstream name outside of just the United Kingdom. With the success of multiple war- Imagine that, like that grim dark shit that is Warhammer in today's world where everything's censorship, people get ticked off over the smallest thing, right? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? That is like, <laughs> then they basically discover Warhammer world. Like, is this about equality and is this about, nope, nope, don't even think about that. Don't even touch that if you're thinking that. So, some people are going to have rude awakening with this Warhammer, right? When they really get exposed to it, like, oh, this is going to be, oh my god. Warhammer titles such as Mechanicus, Dark Tide, Bolt Gun, and Rogue Trader, it was clear that the people hunger for more digestible, wide appeal 40k titles, and it just so happened that a certain one from 2011 decided to end on a cliffhanger, ready to be picked back up. Captain Titus, accused of chaos corruption and heresy at the end of Space Marine 1, returns 13 years later with a new game, a new coat of paint, and a demotion in Space Marine 2, developed by Saber Interactive and published by Focus Entertainment. What is your reward? My salvation is my reward. What reward that anyone can ask for? Your craft. My craft is death. What is your pledge? My pledge is eternal service. What is your craft? The fuck you think? What you just say? I mean death. I mean death. Now, some backstory. I am what one would like to call a small Warhammer fan. I dabble a little bit. He can only get some wreck, chat. And this dabbling has brought me to a lot of aspects of the hobby. And with the exception of the laughable Warhammer Plus subscription service, I tend to engage with all of it, be they books, games, and the tabletop. This has made me grow into a strange combination of excited and jaded at the same time. Warhammer, much like Star Wars, is a collection of fantastic things, mediocre things, and terrible things all under the same label. Yeah, which panics me as well. The lore is so deep. I'm like, I barely know anything, and I realize how deep it is. Like, I know of things that is like, your average guy is not going to know about unless they watch all these videos, right? All the lore videos. And I always have like, you better capture the essence of it, man. You better capture everything. How, how you capture the feel of the world when the world is so diverse and big like that? Where smallest things matter at that level, right? Even the capturing smallest things might make something like a TV show or something, you know, like feel great, right? That's what I have this feeling like, okay, Henry Cavill show or whatever, right? I hope they do it right because it's a big task. How are you gonna capture Warhammer at that essence? Maybe you, they can just choose one small aspect or one big aspect of it and just focus on that and leave everything around, which is fine, 
right? You can't ask for, but if they try to do everything and fuck it up, like how Disney and everybody's doing right now, that would really piss me off. Like this is one chance to make Warhammer big, right? On, on the big screen. You better not fuck it up. That way. And Henry Cavill is a real fan. So maybe, he'll, I guess he'll intervene how he was doing in The Witcher and people in life left The Witcher. Maybe he'll be like one of those guys, like, like, let's not make this too watered down where there's nothing. Like, what the fuck is this even Warhammer anymore? Where they differ is that Star Wars, at least lately, has a significantly larger percentage in the mediocre things category, where Warhammer feels like it is spread amongst all three evenly. It is 33% pure cinema, bland padding, and absolute horseshit. Engaging with the media, engaging with the universe, is not about enjoying its aspects as a whole, but rather finding the things you individually love and putting your time and effort into that. You may find nothing appealing about the Tyranids, giant bugs from outer space, and the main villain of Space Marine 2, but the undead Egyptian skeleton Necrons might be far more engaging. The Ultramarine. That's because you don't know what the fuck is Tyranids and why is that so threatening and what makes them really terrifying. I, I have a very imaginative mind and when I see the picture, I create a picture in my head. And I, when, whenever I watch Warhammer, I'm in the world of Warhammer. That's what I'm imagining. I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm, not, I'm, I'm literally get tuned out whenever I watch. That's why I love this video so much. That's why I watch a lore video a lot, right? But so I can imagine what Tyranid, like the threat of Tyranid, what the Tyranid swarm is supposed to be. And it's terrifying as fuck. You can understand why they are one of the main enemies. Probably the, in current version, it's like the main enemy, right? That's the threat protagonists of this title to me are relatively boring outside of a few of their named characters yet my favorite space marine legion are murdering psychopaths who flay people alive for fun like so what that says about me i don't know the reason for this whole tangent is that while I am often excited for new Warhammer games, I am also rather critical of them, possibly even more so than I am of other products. Because I care so much about this universe and those that participate in it, I want it to be a good representation of what we can put out. This is why I don't prescribe to the recent consensus that Space Marine 1 is an underrated gem from the past. I think it's perfectly fine. And doesn't go much past that. I was really hoping Space Marine 2 would be that gem, would be what Space Marine 1 could have been given more oh, no. time and not being 13 years ago. Was I right? I uh, kind of? So let's talk Come campaign. On, man. In Space Marine 2, you play as Lieutenant Titus, demoted after the accusation from Leandros and here to stop a Tyranid invasion. The Tyranids are a hive mind of extremely genetically adaptive bugs who basically turn all forms of biomass into more of them. They're pretty insane and often considered one of, if not the biggest threat to all sentient life in the galaxy. So, you know, stop them from eating the entire planet. And the intro of this game is, in my opinion, the best part. You play as a nameless Death Watch soldier after an excellent opening cutscene where you crash down below and are slowly taught how to shoot, fight, parry, dodge, and all the rest while your kill team is slowly killed piecemeal as you are unable to message them due to a damaged Vox. This whole part culminates in a reveal where right after you send your bioweapon to halt the tier in advance, it's revealed that this nameless Death Watch soldier is actually Captain Titus. Obviously. Holy Pog, add the soy jack pointing image to the screen. That is, before you get impaled by a Carnifex and are murdered, but miraculously live by crossing the Rubicon Primaris and becoming Primaris Lieutenant Titus. That's right, baby. We knew Games Workshop had another Primaris Lieutenant for us, and it's T-Man himself. You are inducted back into the Ultramarines on shaky ground, and off you go to murder Zeno's filth in the name of the God Emperor. Now, this is where people might tend to diverge on opinions a bit. Space Marine 2 is a 2010s shooter through and through, and what that means for you can vary. When I think of a 2010s shooter, I think the same thing I discussed prior. Gray and Tam, grunting dudes in armor, bad characterization, and worst story but with tons of shooty bang bang others see it as a i mean bullet storm right when was that i'm pretty sure it was around that time bullet storm was awesome anybody remember that game that game was epic <clears throat> I, I never played games that didn't have much of story just like i, I never understood that like the fuck was that but then 
I guess I was like, fuck it, let's play Bulletstorm, and I played it. Insanely fun game. There was not a single moment I remember that I didn't have fun. With all the mechanics kicking people who just fly into spikes and shit, that was awesome. So basically something like that. A straightforward turn your brain off level of action with set pieces and window dressing to enjoy as they play. For them, the lack of any kind of overarching narrative is not a bad thing, it's half the point. I can't deny when I say that I was hoping for a little more from the narrative of this game, but I think it stings twice as much due to the promise I was seeing at certain parts of it. Now, for starters, the gameplay of Space Marine 2 is incredibly fun, genuinely a great time to mess around with. It plays more like God of War than it does a third-person shooter. You do plenty of gun combat, but the melee has light combos that you throw around and then you parry when you see a blue light or dodge when you see a red light. Then an enemy is wounded enough to be executed, which helps you regenerate armor or health if you have recently lost some, and it just helps that the game is an absolutely gory spectacle. Just pure blood splatters everywhere and bugs being ripped apart limb from limb one after the other. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't like when there's too much thing happening in the, in the screen. You're just button massing kind of because you can't see shit. You're just like killing things at hordes. I need more finesse in like combat and things. Obviously there is that but I'm not sure about like this kind of group. I guess it makes sense because he's like this powerful dude, Titus Primaris, right? And he can kill some basic tyrannists without even like having scratch on him, even if they attack him. So button mashing kind of works, but I don't know. It truly is glorious, and it better be glorious because that's all you are going to be doing for the eight or so hours this campaign lasts. During that time, Titus will begrudgingly be given orders from his Scottish-ass captain while his two subordinates question his actions throughout the campaign. I say this so matter-of-fact because that really is a massive amount of what the campaign has to offer. You and your squad get an order from your captain. You go down to Come eradicate on, the Tyranid infestation. You do exactly that while saying the famous ultramarine lines such as death to the xenos or for Gilliman or courage and honor or die heretic then you return back to the battle barge get more orders and do it again that's what? for the most part is the entire purpose of the campaign it's a co come on man you uh, i was hoping after something like dark tide and things that like it's gonna be somewhat like unique that's what i said in the start of the video with the current mechanics and engine you can do a lot of things with it make the if it's just repetitive isn't that big like what the fuck this is one of the reason why i don't like uh shooter games like that uh because it just becomes that repetitive i was hoping space money is not gonna be like that Pod campaign from 2010. Big, gruff, shoot man, McGrungy dude are given orders, execute them, return for more orders, and then repeat. And you're probably asking, well, What's wrong with that? Hell, these COD games from back when were relatively loved at the time, and to that I say, not really. Often they were considered the weakest parts of their package, but even with that being said, they Come on man, Call of Duty games were not like that, especially campaigns, they were like unique, they were fun. I remember World at War, I remember Modern Warfare. They were not close to like that, that was like, if anything, the modern campaigns kind of become that, that's why I didn't like it much. But yeah, the, even the Black Ops 1, do you remember Black Ops 1, how awesome that was? It was like followed with Modern Warfare. It was all awesome, right? The, how stories and intensified, how like even the, how you do missions kind of intensify based on like what you did before, right? Mission kind of molded that way. It didn't feel repetitive and things like that, right? I don't know. I don't like repetitive things. Why? Because just replay the first mission, it will feel the same. If, if that's the fact, like what's the point of any campaign and any story? It's not fun. They did have set pieces that made it a bit more enjoyable overall. What Space Marine 2 is missing is both the story and characterization as well as the set pieces. And that is where I think it, it truly misses its part. Gameplay, set pieces, not visual ones. That's all beautiful, but the actual meat, the player part. Set pieces are easier to discuss because they are gameplay related. As mentioned before, a majority of the campaign will be the usual shoot, stab, and murder of Xenos, but what it misses out on is any change in the formula to mix it up and keep each individual mission fresh. In the campaign, there is absolutely zero progression of any kind. You don't earn experience, you don't earn armor upgrades, you don't earn cosmetics, you simply play as Titus and that is that, unless you are a co-op 
and then you play as his other two squad mates as well. Now, normally, when the game throws you into a set piece, it strips you of all of your upgrades, and it's a bit annoying. But because that doesn't exist, there is a profoundly lacking amount of cool shit to do in each mission. My mind races directly back to Titanfall 2, one of the best shooter campaigns of all time, and vividly remembering every single story mission having some kind of cool gimmick. Getting separated from BT in the sewers, the apartment home fabricator map with all the verticality, effect and causes time travel, and the seer escape kit. There is always a cool reason why they all felt different. And if you want a similar example back in the time frame of Space Marine 1, hell, even something like Modern Warfare 2 from 2009 is a good one. Turret sections on the Humvees, snowmobile chase scenes, two factions fighting each other as crossfire, defending the Burger Town, AC-130 segments, all of this stuff. It's all stuff. Yeah, I remember Modern Warfare 2 being received as not that good compared to the other two. I guess it was smaller campaign, if I remember correctly, compared to the first and also three. But three came out later, so that wasn't, the, yeah, the, compared to first, it was like, a, you know, smaller campaign, and there was like many automated scenes where you just like, in a scenario without having much control, just shoot at things. I pretty sure I remember something like that, people didn't like it. I didn't mind it, I felt like it was like a gap between Modern Warfare 1 and 3, and had very cinematic things, it was fine to break up the usual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. And Space Marine 2 has almost none of this except for three parts I can actually remember. The first is you get a pyro blaster and you burn a bunch of Ripper Swarms into a room and push them out from surrounding you. Of that course. part's fine, it's a bit of novelty. But the really fun moment, probably the best in the game, is when you are falling from space across a bunch of destroyed ships. And that genuinely Damn. felt incredibly badass. All you're doing Doing is moving yourself out of the way of stuff but just seeing that was such an awesome breakup from all the other kinds of gameplay going on there's also a bit near the end when you hold your company standard and fire basically in the start of mass effect 2 you're this outside walking outside the ship and looking at the space something like that but more about as i guess bunch of enemies with a pistol which is kind of decent but other than that there is genuinely so little to break up the same gameplay loop over and over again which i wouldn't mind if there was customization or progression to keep it interesting but it doesn't have that and it wears very thin over the course of the game's runtime which hey i mean we can forgive right if the story and people we are playing are a bit better and here i'm a bit more mixed I do think gameplay wise it overstates its welcome, but the gameplay is so good that even while that does happen, it isn't the worst thing ever. But what gets me here is just general wasted opportunity. Like space marines are often seen as boring characters and for damn good reason. It's hard to make a compelling character when their personality- Yeah, basically John Cena of Warhammer, I guess, right? That's what it is. Yeah, I can, I guess I can see like how in gameplay you, you suck at starting, progressively get better with like combination and things, it becomes fun. But yeah, it's like if story's good, I guess it's fine. Boils down to murder everything that isn't me and then meditate on how you can do it better. Hard to make that interesting. Or so I had thought. Right after playing my first campaign run through, I read Horus Rising, the first of the Horus Heresy trilogy that I, despite reading over 30, 40K novels, never got around until now. And let me just say, Garvia Loken is a badass motherfucker who is the most interesting son of a bitch in power armor I've read in a hot minute. Turns out, you absolutely can make incredibly interesting space marines so long as you have the right writer and Dan Abnett was the guy for the job. Titus has promise, and his relation with his squad mates also has promise. And occasionally, you'll see a cutscene and go, oh damn, maybe they got it in them. I must apologize for my actions on other counts. Unnecessary. I fell prey to suspicion. Almost killed me. When I was a young captain, one of my men questioned my motives brushed his concerns aside and I paid the price your suspicions arose because I failed to answer your doubts as I failed to answer his stand by for some orbital drop I'm honored to fight beside you both as are we intense brother. you grew up on Calf. and so you said it's not dead today why sir 
But for each of those, there is another cutscene of the usual fanfare and things just move ahead. Plus, just in general, the campaign's pacing isn't great. A lot of it feels rushed. Example, you meet another- Look man, if the dialogues are great, story's decent, maybe I can forgive the repetitive accent because something is repetitive because they have to be, right? I mean, you are fighting hordes of Tyranids, right? They are not your equal, that's the whole point. That's why you kill them in mass and it's like kind of repetitive in that way. But if things around it is interesting and I guess you can make it interesting by being better at like combination and things better over time at combat by the end of the game you feel like yeah I'm better now even if it's repetitive it can kind of work so I guess it's fine if that's the case a faceless ultramarine in your campaign and one of your squad mates ensures you he is the bee's knees or the emperor's skeletal knees you fight with them for a bit and then this cutscene plays out the enemy infiltrated the dome no my lord what about the temple of Thassian? The dome was evacuated days ago. Rejoin the main force immediately. Our orders are to remain here. On whose authority? Captain Fairburn. We are to hold this position until further notice. The dome is empty. Now move on. But, sire... I gave you an order. Forgive me, my lord. Perhaps there was a communication error. The captain insisted. The deserters. No, no, no. We have our orders. Vox your captain. If you are deserters, I'll execute you myself. Captain Fairburn, come in. Damn. Captain Fairburn, come in. Ambush. Come on. Kill them. Oh, Space Marine died. Come on. A simple ambush by some, uh, I don't know, like basic soldier, like killed a Space Marine. Isn't that Lord supposed to be Space Marine supposed to be much stronger than that? I don't know. Yeah, there was some intense thing, right? I love that shit, right? And I like how the guy's dedicated, like, oh, fuck me, these are spacemen, they will kill me. Let's pretend to call even I know somebody's not gonna answer. <laughs> so this whole scene illustrates how I feel about the campaign. The first half of the cutscene, genuinely good, tense, interesting, good camera work, intriguing, awesome. Second half, dude, we just met this guy, this mission, and he dies as a throwaway character. Then the Rubric Marines arrive, say absolutely nothing, and you just begin combat. Like, I gotta say, the Thousand Sons need more fanfare than just showing up like this. These are the Thousand Sons. The Ultramarines might be the main character, but the Thousand Sons are, sorry, way more interesting and have way better lore. We should have had a sorcerer with them shouting obscenities at Titus and crew or watch them do some fucked up warp shit to people to really nail down how much of a threat they are. The entire opening mission was to establish how unstoppable the Tyranid force is, including a final last stand and Titus's entire squad and even himself technically dying. The Thousand Sons just show up, mog you, and then you kill them. You don't get any proper introduction until Imora about halfway through the game and even he comes out of nowhere with zero character setup, which blows. Yeah, they could have amplified that entrance, right? Like the ambush should have been like, rather than just instantly kill soldiers, just like, something's coming it's an ambush and just like amplify with the intense music and shit before like you epic entrance them all the shit this is happening type of way rather than just oh there they are portal there you go set piece there you go do a mission kill them i guess the theatrics are like missing it was because Imura is like kind of a chad if they had a secret agenda to make me join zinch instead of the ultramarines bitch they succeeded because even though he had little to no setup every time that crazed sorcerer talked i loved hearing it isn't that the thing of chaos in the first place especially like corrupted marines and things that they are gonna be like st slightly stronger and cooler 
you know, more corrupted. That's the thing of it. But basically, in the end of the day, you know, like uh, Emperor and Space Marines are gonna kind of win, struggle. Isn't that the whole setup? Like they're supposed to be cooler and stronger, somewhat. Dude, his actor owed rent and his performance gave me all the ham that someone like Palpatine would give me. In fact, for the most part, there are a few random performances that worked out super well and none of them were from the main cast. Like, listen to this dude on the Bane Blade. You will give your life in the name of our holy emperor. Sir, yes, sir. Will you give your life in the name of all that is good and pure? In the name of our holy emperor. Sir, yes. Take up the Cadian standard and hold it high so that the enemy will know the name of their executioners! That's Baneblade Bill. I really like Baneblade Bill. There's also Dreadnought Dave. Now watch him throw a statue and hit a Hell Drake in the face. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn, son. What a baller Dave is. It sucks he died and is now trapped in an eternal robot coffin. There's also some just missed stuff at the end I thought we were going to get but didn't. You enter a Necron tomb complex down below, which what? plays into the importance of the black stone used to either amplify or negate the warp. Something that I knew about because of my knowledge of 40k, but I feel like people will be very lost on when they see it in the game. But you know, I kind of thought I'd get the chance to fight a few Necrons. I got really giddy when I saw it, but it was just when yeah. I like Space Marine 2 just went with the Marvel element of it. If you didn't watch the TV show, if you didn't watch some spin-off here and there, and you don't know what the fuck is happening in the movie, that's your fault. No dressing for the missions and nothing more. I didn't really need like a whole new faction, but a couple enemies here and there would have been kind of fun. Would have been a great reveal, like how do they keep this under wraps the whole time? The last hour of the game just goes off the rails. You get another soy jack pointing moment where Marnius motherfucking Calgar shows up and the whole theater claps. I clapped, I clapped when I saw it. He spends about five minutes on screen shouting orders and then when the company assaults a demon lord of change what? this happens This is so fucking funny to me. Yeah, I like how <laughs> Portal was waiting for all of them. Okay, the third guy made it okay. This Lord of Change, you know, greater demon of Zinch, freezes everyone in time or whatever, except us because we hide behind a tank. I guess nobody else hid behind anything. Then Marnius Calgar passes an ultra kidney stone and says, nah. Fuck you, I'd win. And without reinforcements, walks head first into what is presumed to be a goddamn warp portal. A portal into the warp. The Immaterium. It's this, the Immaterium. If it is, we must move quickly. To where? Uh-uh, no, no, don't pass go. Don't collect your corpse starch. The fuck you mean the warp? Ain't no way you in the warp because so far your video game has been very faithful to the source material and very accurate to almost every single- Yeah, that is so true. Like, ah, ah, ah. this is like, ah. 
And he's literally just like, fuck it, walk, you know, just, let's be bad as fuck Zinch, like, you know, his demon means nothing. Even though I actually like that they actually created all these sound effects and things to make it look epic, which they should. And they're like, ah, fuck that shit, just walked inside, waited for all three to get in, <laughs> portal closes, I mean the warp, yeah, fuck it. Why not just go in front of, like, Zinch or something, punch him in the face, why the fuck not? But, you know, at least I'm gonna say this, like, Bricky was saying all missions are, like, kind of the same. But shit like this is kind of different, right? So it, it will kind of make up for it. Like, how much can you want from a campaign? There's also a question of that. People with open world games mentality now, once 50 hours of gameplay, you can't have that. So if you like 10, 12 hours of gameplay and shit like this exists, like, I guess it's fine. I mean, at that point, you can just like chalk it up to like, yeah, Tyrone is like how different you can kill Tyrone is, you know? Single part of the Warhammer universe. The only person who braves the warp is Kaldor Tangerine Drago, and he is an insane person who eats suns, and that we all agree is stupid that he can even survive in the warp. But eh, this, I mean, it has to be some kind of zinch bullshittery, right? Because if it was truly the warp we would all be atomic dust in seconds it's one of those types of jump the shark moments that even it's literally called immaterium right it's like it's it, if this was like uh you know like more scientific based it would be where laws of physics don't make sense type of shit right even if you aren't a massive fan of warhammer you can look at that and be like that's not right there's no way that's right in fact it's so not right that i'm almost more keen on the idea that it's supposed to be some kind of zine shenanigans and in a way they could write themselves out of it that way but i can't imagine someone taking the ip of warhammer and doing a bungle that badly despite this you fight a, a genuinely pretty good boss fight actually against imura and the lord of change actually quite fun uh, you break the MacGuffin through sheer force of manly screaming and uh, well you escape the end of the game does feel super rushed as Imura dies but you know seeing she could never really tell and then you come back to get promoted and get a stern talking to from the chaplain who I was shown no mercy Leandros. Oh man, I am two scenes in and I'm calling something right now. I don't want to spoil anybody, so don't tell me one way or the other. The fucking chaplain who is like super weird in the opening scene is going yeah. to be the traitor from the first game. Leandros? Yeah. Soy Jack pointing moment, let's go! Much like Brad, this is also something I called almost immediately at the beginning, but I suppose. Yeah, I mean, there's like many, uh, you know, like twists are happening. Game feels fun so far. I don't know, right? You know, the whole warp thing, I think it's going to be since. I mean, GW, it's very anal about like who does what. They didn't see that. I, I guess they're going to chalk it off for that. Like it's not really warp type of way. But yeah. All right, well, I'm going to stop here. This was really awesome. I, th I thought he said like game is over. How is it still half a video left? And somehow it's age restricted video. Like it's a video game. Why is YouTube going insane nowadays? All right. Uh, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.